welcome to this week's Phil Steele Plus, Things You Should Know. I'm going to take you through Phil Steele Plus so you can use it to your best uh, as you purchase it for the season and also give you a lot of information you probably didn't know about this weekend, plus give you some selections as well, which is always really nice. It's all free. It's all right up for you right now. Well, let's start out with a letdown spot, and I'm going to take a look and show you a little bit about the team pages. First of all, on Phil Steel Plus, you have access to all the college teams. We'll have the FCS teams updated for you in the next week or so, and you also get the NFL selections. But let's start looking at the college just so you can see how it works. And uh, I'm going to take a look at this week's uh, possible letdown spot, and I'm going to pull up Troy against ULM. Now, when we're looking at this one, you want to take a look back to last year for Troy. Troy, if you go back to 2017, upset LSU. Now, look at the individual game grade out here. This takes into account the strength of opponent played and the final score as well as the yards of the game. Now, they earned a 100.9 against LSU, which is one of their best grades of the year. How did they follow up that big upset win on the road? How about 64.0 against South Alabama? They lost at home. It was an upset. And that 64.0 was actually their lowest rated grade of the entire season. Well, last week, Troy went into Nebraska, came out with the win. What will happen this week against ULM? We will find out. This is one, uh, one note here on the Troy file. It says ULM at home. It's actually at ULM. We'll get that corrected. Uh, the Troy uh, or the ULM file shows that they actually at the half, look at this against Texas A&M. It was 261, 318. A&M blocked a field goal right before the half to uh, have that edge. Actually, I think it was 261 to 218. So once again, the halftime number is off there, but it's 261 to 218 ULM at the half. Uh, blocked field goal, and then they just sort of wilted in the second half. But they already upset Southern Miss, played a decent game against Southeast Louisiana. Caleb Evans, the QB, we'll see if that turns into another letdown spot like last year for Troy. Now we're going to take a look at the series history play. And for this one, we're going to go take a look at West Virginia against Kansas State. Now, if you look at how these two teams have been playing this year, K-State struggled with South Dakota blown out by Mississippi State. Started to get it together last week. In fact, this was 41-10 to before UTSA got a late score. West Virginia's been pretty much dominant in both games. Look at this individual game grade. They played to a 106 and a 100 game grade, so they have been strong. But I want to point out the series history, and this is another thing to use on Phil Steele Plus. All you do is come down to this week's opponent. Here's West Virginia against Kansas State. We'll click on that, and up pops the last 21 years matchups in the series. Now, here's what I want to point out. These teams have met six times recently, including last year. It's Bill Snyder against Holgerson, all six meetings. K-State 1, K-State 1, K-State 1, K-State 1. Red means you lose, and I'll show you what the, the other one looks like over here. When you look at K-State's file, it shows all wins. West Virginia had a one-point win. West Virginia had a five-point win. So in the six years they've been playing, the most West Virginia has won by in any game is five points. And this week they're laying 16 or 17 points. That could indicate take the underdog there. And, of course, Bill Snyder, one of the best underdog coaches in the country year in and year out. But this series history is something that – I find fascinating. You can use it for every game, whether it's a game like K-State against UTSA, which is here, and you see they only met once. That was 2015. Or you can go look at the K-State against Oklahoma, where they have met all these times since 1997. The red indicates win or loss. The red indicates cover or not. And these numbers out here, green is good numbers, red is bad numbers. That's the same thing on Phil Steele Plus, by the way. As you can see, for the Mississippi State game, K-State had a lot of red going on. For uh, West Virginia, they had a lot of green going on against Youngstown State. So keep that in mind. But your series history play this week is to take Kansas State plus the 16. Here's my wow stat of the week. And uh, I'm going to go to Memphis for this one because, it, frankly, the numbers are pretty big here. Memphis uh, this week, if you take a look, they're playing South Alabama. So we're going to go to South Alabama and get them up on the screen. And this is what I do with every game. I get the two teams side by side. Then you can look at rush numbers. You can look at rush defense numbers. Uh, you can look at the individual leaders up top, how the teams are doing. And when you look at the individual leaders up top, look at this. Daryl Henderson, Memphis. 
521 yards rushing, 14.5 yards per carry. Now, I've seen people average or running backs average 14.5 yards per carry before, but it's usually on five or six carries. This is 521 yards, 14.5 yards per carry. And look at Brady White, 71% completions, 10 touchdowns, one interception. They have played Navy, which has got a pretty good defense. Uh, and in that game, uh, they're in against Georgia State last week. They had 283 yards above what Georgia State normally allows. So this is a pretty potent Memphis offense. South Alabama played a decent game against Louisiana Tech, blown out by Oklahoma State. I would put Memphis's offense about where Oklahoma State's offense is this year, and they allowed 617 yards in that game, 453 through the year. So I'm, I'm going to say let's lean with Memphis. Those are Henderson and White are quite a potent combo for the Memphis Tigers. Now let's take a look at a couple of sandwich games. And a sandwich game is when you're off a big game and you got a big game on deck. We'll start with Ohio State. They're playing Tulane this week. Uh, Ohio State just played TCU, national TV game, uh, big, big matchup, and won the game by 12. And next week, they've got a whiteout against Penn State. This week, they're playing the option of Tulane. Tulane limps in 1-2. and two. They've only beat Nickel State. Try to get your team up for an opponent like Tulane in this one. As potent as Ohio State's offense is, Tulane's not a bad team. In fact, the defensively, they're holding opponents to 96 yards below their season average, which isn't too bad this year. Uh, Jonathan Banks, their QB. Uh, so I'm going to say this is a sandwich game for Ohio State. They're laying over four touchdowns. Take Tulane plus the points. This next one's a little scary because Connecticut's got such a young defense. I mean, you play this game any other day of the week, uh, any other game, and I'm taking Syracuse by 42 points. That makes it a little scary with their potent offense. But let's take a look at the uh, sandwich situation that Syracuse is in this week. We'll go to the uh, ACC, and there's Syracuse. And then we're going to go to the American Conference and pull up Connecticut. Syracuse just played a huge game against Florida State. They wanted Florida State. They wanted to beat Florida State and beat them bad. Mission accomplished. 441 to 240. Earned 104.8 game grade. Look who's on deck. Clemson. You're in a Florida State Clemson sandwich taking on lowly UConn who's been blown out by everybody. UCF beat, trashed them. Boise State trashed them. Uh, I got to think this is an unusual situation for Syracuse, uh, being in coming off a big win like that, and now having uh, a, uh, a weak opponent as a four touchdown favorite. That looks like a sandwich game to me. So it would be Connecticut there. Now the individual game grades went two and one last week. Let's take a look at a couple of individual game grades for this week. And the first game we're going to look at involves Miami of Ohio out of the MAC. And they are playing Bowling Green. So we're click on Bowling Green, click on Miami of Ohio. And when you look at the individual game grades, Miami's 0-3. But they've actually earned an 82, a 77, and a 76 game grade. Here against Cincinnati, that game was played in bad weather. Uh, Minnesota didn't exactly blow them out. They held them to 295 yards. And even the Marshall game only outgained by one yard. On the season, they're being outgained by 43 yards by three decent opponents. All three should be in bowls this year. They've earned an average game grade of 78.6. Now, Bowling Green's got a better record. They're 1-2. and two. But when you look at Bowling Green, they, they're they playing to an average game grade of just 58.6, a 49 grade here, a 54 grade here. So even though BG's at home, if you add the three points to them, that's 61 versus 78. That says Miami should win the game by 17 points, and they're less than a touchdown favorite here. So this is a sneaky one because this team's 0-3. Nobody thinks much of Miami, but the individual game grades does. It says Miami should win this game by 17. Take Miami Redhawks. Next game we're going to look at on the individual game grades is East Carolina and South Florida. Now, South Florida, of course, has got Barnett at QB, and they have looked explosive so far this year. Uh, Barnett is hitting 64% with a 7-3 ratio. Last year, they had a guy in Quentin Flowers who was there. who's was also their leading rusher. Barnett's their number two rusher this year. So all good stuff for USF. But they're playing East Carolina. Now, East Carolina lost in the opener to a FCS school. So everybody threw them in the dumpster. But look at the yards here. They had a 382 to 269-yard edge in that game. Uh, played better than the final score would indicate. Probably should have won that game. And then they come back and beat North Carolina 41-19. to Their individual game grade is an 82. Now, South Florida actually got outgained by Georgia Tech by 176 yards. Then last week against Illinois, they trailed by two scores in the fourth quarter, came 
came back and won. Did end up with a large yardage edge thanks to the comeback. But on the season, they're playing to an average rating of 90.1. So if you take the 90.1 and the 82.4 yet in the three-point home edge, you're looking at South Florida winning the game by 10.7 points and they're laying over three touchdowns in this game so i'm saying take the dog in east carolina and by the way look at the last couple meetings between these two teams uh last year while they lost by 30 it was actually a 38 31 game late third quarter so that was a close game east carolina played with them there and you can click on the box scores for all these past years see how the box scores are lit up and you immediately get the box score of the game so a lot of times there's an underlying story and this game is well uh you take a look at 21 7 here so they played better than the final score would indicate in that one so add it all up take east carolina plus the big points as an individual game grade the next one is oregon state and arizona and uh when you look at this one let's click on arizona the visitor let's click on oregon state the home team arizona so far this year has struggled khalil tate who last year let's look at his rush yards last year Khalil Tate rushed for 1,411 yards, 9.2 yards per carry. I want to show you something. Let's look under individual player stats, and this is something you'll find vital using Phil Steele Plus. Khalil Tate, his first three games running the or six games running the football: 327, 230, 137, 146, 161, 206. Awesome. Final three games, teams got film on them, started playing their defense differently. 32, 28, 58. Here he averaged 200 his first six games. Here he averaged about 40 yards per game. And what's the difference? Well, let's take a look at the uh, what happened in 2017. Loss, loss, loss. Uh, look at the red numbers right there. They lost all three games. Well, how about this year? Tate this year, going to individual player stats, has rushed for a grand total of 14, 8, and 19 yards. He's got a hurt ankle, so he's not running that much here. For But in the opener, he was 8 for 14. So teams have held him to a grand total of 41 yards in three games. That is 13, 14 yards per game combined or per game for Khalil Tate and Arizona's struggling this year. They lost to BYU, got blown out by Houston. And even last week, look at this at the half against Southern Utah. 24-17, they were outgained 233 to 242. Now, what is what is Southern Utah? What's the common denominator here for Southern Utah? And by the way, if you haven't picked up our FCS magazine, we have a complete one page on every single FCS team. Let's go to Phil Steel, the Phil Steel store and click on the FCS magazine. I'll show you that in a bit. But the common denominator, Southern Utah has played them both. Uh, Oregon State had a 41 to 7 edge at the half against Southern Utah, 454 to 195. Wow. And they had about the same green grade against Southern Utah that Arizona had. So while Tate's been playing like that, they've played to an average game grade of 82. Now, Oregon State got blown out by Ohio State. And last week had a field goal at the end of the game, miss against Nevada, or else they would have won that one on the road. They're actually uh, plus 161, plus 183 the last two games, playing pretty well. Jamer Jefferson, you know, their top running back here, uh, Artavis Pierce had 168 against Ohio State, then got banged up against South Utah, missed last week. Jefferson's filled in with 238 and 106. They got Luton back in the lineup, as you see. 23 at 35 for 284. And these are fascinating. Really allows you to follow along and see how each one's done. If you're a fantasy player, you got to love these. And look at Hodgins here. 14 for 200. Timmy Hernandez, 11 for 116. That's pretty impressive. Keep your eyes on these two guys. This is available for every team, by the way. Uh, so it's complete information. All this is at your fingertips. I spend hundreds of thousands of dollars through the years compiling this information, and it's all yours when you're a Phil Seal Plus member. So add it all up. Let's look at the individual game grades. Arizona comes in at an 82. Oregon State at an 81.3. That says Oregon State should be favored by 2.3 points, and they're about a touchdown underdog. That says take Oregon State plus the points as your final individual game grade. Just one note for you. I found it interesting in the weekend. Sometimes I'll just share interesting information with you. How about this Stanford defense? You look at the opening game of the season. Now, we don't have our boxes up yet, but they should be up next week. Uh, they allowed a touchdown to San Diego State in the first quarter, then went through the second, third, fourth quarter, no touchdowns allowed. USC, entire game, no touchdowns allowed. UC Davis, no touchdowns allowed. till one second was left in the game, UC Davis scored a touchdown. So they went a grand total of 10 quarters, almost 11 full quarters without allowing a touchdown. Their defense on the year holding opponents to 124 yards per game, 
below their season average. That's a pretty good D for Stanford. Now let's look at SMU, and this one I'm scratching my head a little bit. Last week, as you recall, it was my mismatch game of the week. I thought Michigan was going to pound SMU for this reason. When you take a look at SMU, click on them and look at their offense. First game, nine first downs. Second game, 13 first downs. In fact, against North Texas, they have one first down at the end of the third quarter, basically. Against Michigan and Don Brown's outstanding defense, how about 22 first downs, 319 yards? And if you click on individual player stats, you'll see there's a little bit of a change here. Ben Hicks was the quarterback. They brought in William Brown. Brown hit 11 to 17 for 82 yards. We'll see what happens at their quarterback situation the rest of the year. Look at James Prochier, 166 yards receiving against Michigan. How about that? Once again, the individual stats are something fine. fine. That doesn't really give you a pick on any game, but it's just a surprising number for me that they could have 22 first downs against TCU and North Texas and they get t- combined and then get 22 against Don Brown's Michigan defense. Let's take a look at a couple of totals I want to look at this week. And we're going to go with Louisiana. Uh, and you look at Louisiana this week, they're playing Coastal Carolina. Now, what jumped out to me when I was going through the play, the individual games, and I once again, I line them up side by side, this jumped out. Louisiana's allowing 5.8 yards per carry, 239 yards per game on the ground. That's not that good. Coastal Carolina is allowing 5.9 yards per carry, so neither team can stop the run right now. In fact, Coastal Carolina would be a lot worse if not playing an FCS team, Campbell, and holding them to 3.0. They gave up 6.9, 7.0. Now let's look at the QBs. Andre Nunez, 78.4% with a 3-1 ratio. Kilton Anderson, 71% with a 5-1 ratio. That sure looks like bad defenses, and they are allowing 154 yards more than what their opponents come in averaging on the year. They're allowing 79 yards more than what their opponents come in averaging. And then offensively, Louisiana's averaging 77 yards over what their opponents normally allow. So I think you got good offenses, good quarterbacks, poor rush defenses. I'm going to go with the over, and the total is actually very reasonable in that one. The other one to take a look at, South Carolina and Vanderbilt. Uh, and when I looked at this one, what jumped out to me was, and I always look at the how they do against what opponents normally average. What this number is out in this column here, as an example, Coastal Carolina, the them to 238 yards. This number indicates you put this number on top of that number. It's 519. That's what Coastal Carolina is averaging on the season, 519 yards. They held them to 238 or 281 below their season average. So on the year, South Carolina's holding opponents, even held Georgia at 23 below their season average. Average season best against Coastal Carolina, season best against Georgia, holding opponents to 152 yards below their season average. Well, Vanderbilt's doing well as well. They're holding opponents to 106 yards per game below their season average, uh, including and all three foes. They held well second best, second best, and first best on the year. That has me thinking. You got two pretty good defenses. I'm going to lean with the under in the South Carolina and Vandy game. Now couple quick notes before I get to uh, the NFL, and I got a couple NFL ones for you. I do want to note for you how to sign up to uh, my newsletter inside the press box. I got all 55 write-ups available for you, uh, and not only my picks, but also the um, uh, com- my computer selections as well are all available on inside the pressbox.com. Just trying to get there right now. Sorry about that. Take a second here inside the pressbox.com. Let's go there. All right, here we are. Now, when you go here to inside the press box, you can get a sample of what it looks like on each one. And then when you go to subscribe, I've got a special code for you. You see how the price is here for the week, 19, 19, and 29? Well, this week, I'll let you take 50% off the NFL and 50% off the college. So 10 bucks for the NFL or 10 bucks for the college. Or if you go to the NFL and College Weekly Bundle, I'm going to throw this out probably just this week. You can get this week's College and Weekly Bundle, normally $29.99, for just $10. I'm going to let you take basically 20 bucks off and get it for $10. So when you sit subscribe, you're going to type in the code word BROWNS. That's B-R-O-W-N-S. And if you want any of the season packages up here, take $25 off. You've heard me offer $20 off before. I'm letting you take $25 off. Type in the code word Browns. Yeah, the Browns won yesterday, so we're in a good mood here in Cleveland. B-R-O-W-N-S. And when you type that in, you'll get the NFL and College Weekly Bundle for $10. bucks. you will get this, any of these, for $25 off that price. That's at InsideThePressBox.com. Okay, let's go back to 
uh, philsteel.com. And when you go there, go to the store. Now, I talked about the FCS magazine before. That is right. Where's that at on here? It's Pro College Double Deal Preview. FCS Pro and College inside the press box. It should be up there. SCS inside the press box. Uh, I got to go to the home page, I guess. So let me go to the home page because it's evidently not in the store. Uh, go under digital magazines on the home page. Well, we'll go to the digital magazines on the home page. Well, I guess we could do that. Let's find out how to get to the home page here. Uh, and that's a store. Here we are. You can go to f this FCS College Preview. And when you click here, you can order it. This is what you get on each FCS team, a uh, complete breakdown of it. But now let's go back to the store because I want to show you how to get Phil Steel Plus. When you go to the store and you go down to Phil Steel Plus and click on it, uh, you can hit order now and that'll take you right here. Now you get all this information on every team all season long for the $69, but I'm going to let you take 20 bucks off that. You go up to view cart. I think I just ordered it. Yeah, I ordered it twice. Order one. So I'm ordering one. I'm going to type in the code word, and guess what? We're going to keep the code word the same this week. It's going to be Browns. So when you click in the code word Browns and apply the coupon, it's going to take that price down to, that's still showing me four. I don't want four. I want one. And update cart. There we go. The $69, take $20 off. You get it for just $49. $49, guys, there's like, it's what, 18 weeks of the season left this year? And that comes out to less than $3 per week to have all this information at your access. And then just said proceed to checkout. So your code word this week for both PressBox and here is Browns. Okay, let's go to the NFL page now. And when we go to the NFL page, we're going to take a look at last night's game and just see what uh, what that's all about. You go to the team pages. That's what it looks like. Looks pretty nice for the team pages. You got the logos in there and everything. Take a look at the Cleveland Jets game and see what Phil Steele Plus would have been projecting for last night's game. As you see, it was just updated after two weeks. But the individual game grades say Cleveland 92.4, Jets 90.5. That would say the Browns winning the game by 4.9 points. Not too bad. And then look here. This gives you the defense. Browns are holding their foes to 102 yards per game under their season average. They held the Saints to 275 yards. That's impressive. And even Pittsburgh, where they gave up 472, that's actually three yards under their season average. That's They held their opponents to the season low in both games. Same thing with the Jets. Season low, season low. 88 yards on offense below the season average of Detroit. 85 below Miami's. So those two factors right there would point out the under. And, oh, the game went under as well. So there's your NFL. Oh, by the way, in the NFL, you can get the individual player stats as well. See them updated just like the other, especially if you're a fantasy football player. Uh, you got to love that. And when you go back to the uh, FBS team pages and click on them, you get the last 40 years results. This is Look at this. Every game since 1976 at your fingertips. And look at all these stats. Who was the head coach in each year? Uh, what were their stats? All there. 40 years on each team. Now, this one's currently updated to 2016. We'll get the 17 one up there. Check out your magazine for 17 right now, but that'll be updated in the next week or so. Uh, this gives you the last 17 years leaders, so you can see who the top players have been in each position, then a complete draft history. We'll have the start charts up pretty shortly as well. But all this information at your fingertips for all the teams every week, and it's just 49 bucks if you use the code word BROWNS this week. So I hope you got yourself a lot of uh, useful information of this weekend. Oh, one other point I wanted to point out here. Go back to that Miami game a minute for the uh, individual stats. When I look up Miami of Ohio, I want to go back to last year's game and just show you one thing. They lost that game by eight points last year, 37-29. But Bowling Green got a 93-yard fumble return with 121 left in the game. So it's a 30-29 to game. Miami's in field goal range. They fumbled the ball. Bowling Green returned it for a touchdown. Final score, 37-29. But Miami could easily have won that game. In fact, it had a 36-25 to first down edge, 6-12 to 505 yard edge. And once again, all those box scores at your fingertips on each game. That'll do it for this week. It was great talking to you once again. And uh, we'll be back.